Okay. So welcome everybody who's joining us. Um, I'm Josh Whiteley from Rupa Ayurveda and I'm joined again um, by two good friends. Um, this is our second talk um, that we're doing. And uh, this topic today is called Aloneness, Al Aloneness and Loneliness. And I'm joined by uh, Dr. Dessa, um, as well as Jessica Richmond, um, who are both in India right now. And I said this last time and I'll say it again, it's very early in the morning for them. So we appreciate it as always them being awake for us. We're in the West Coast, or in the, in the, in the West. Um, Dr. Dessa is a, a Gaudiya Vaishnava scholar and practitioner. And in addition to teaching and lecturing on Sanskrit and Indian philosophies, he's also the director of the Jiva Institute of Vedic Studies, uh, where he's developed a new field of science called Jiva Vedic Psychology. Um, the Jiva Institute also, um, for those of you interested in Ayurveda and things like this too, does a lot of work with Ayurveda. Um, there's some great courses um, and even free videos and things that you can see on the, on the website. So we'll talk a little bit more how to find that at the end today too. Um, and Jessica Richmond's an American born psychotherapist who's been living and studying directly with Dr. Dasa, uh, where she sees individual clients for one-on-one -on -one therapy, combining both Vedic and Western methods of psychology. Um, so I'm very happy to have you both here with me and uh, appreciate your time. And I look forward to this discussion. I think it'll be very interesting. Um, we were just talking for a couple of minutes before um, about you know, this idea of loneliness and how it's e even more so maybe now than ever has become um, such a prominent thing with COVID and all of us being sort of stuck in these smaller worlds and, and having to connect, you know, primarily through things like the internet. And so I think this is a particularly timely topic as well for that reason. Um, and um, do you guys have anything you want to say before we start or are you, should I just launch into some questions? You ready? I'm fine. Okay. So I, I was thinking about some questions over the last few days to, to ask about this topic. And I thought it might be interesting if we started, um, I think loneliness gets a little bit of a bad rap. You know, we hear that sound, it sounds like a very not fun experience and it often can be. Um, but I'm curious, uh, Babaji, what's the gift of loneliness? What does loneliness give us that's, that's a positive thing or what does it teach us or what is it trying to show us that we can, we can glean? Well, everything, this world has two sides to it. The good side, the bad side. Advantage, disadvantage. It's like you mentioned COVID-19. So it's, it's a disease, virus killing thousands of people actually, millions of people are dying because of this. And I know US is number one, America, India is number three now, probably it's going to be number two soon the way the cases are coming. So, but it also, COVID is in a way is also giving us an opportunity to think, to stop. As we say that modern life is very fast. Nobody has time. So COVID actually has given us time by force. Okay, sit at home, don't go out. People are always complaining, I have no time. I cannot get time with my family. I'm so busy, I have so much to, to do. So now you are actually with your family 24 hours, seven days a week. So you think what it means to be with family, what it means to have relationships. And if you don't have a family, if you are just by yourself, it also gives you time to think, who am I? Why do I feel lonely? What is this loneliness? From where this feeling is coming? So that actually is a gift because all the time we are running around and we know things about others, we are reaching to others, we are you know, knowing things about our environment, we are even going to other planets, we are going to Mars, Jupiter, wherever, trying to figure out, but we are not going inside. The very person who is the knower does not know who he or she or it or whatever pronoun you want to use is, who am I? I am the knower and I am the center. Everything is around me, but I don't know myself. So COVID actually is giving that opportunity if you want to take it, because opportunity can be utilized and it can be misused. It can be a boon and it can be a bane. 
so i can become completely depressed lonely get into drinking drugs all these types of troubles or i can actually read and find out who am i what am i doing and there's a lot of knowledge available on internet fortunately we have cost at the click of your you know, finger so i can also spend time and actually that will give you a peek into yourself and then you'll realize why do i feel lonely and how can i solve this problem so that i think is a boom besides you know you can you have a family you can have nice loving relationship with your family people with whom you never got the time to be with now you can be with them and you can relish that intimacy so that is also the boon of course the other side is that people start hating each other being so close to each other because we are not accustomed to these things the very people whom we aspire to be with if we spend too much time with them then we want a distance like people say come on give me space so on one side we want intimacy and on another side we want space so this is a dilemma so you can learn about that why is it what it means to be intimate and why do i feel lonely if i go away i feel lonely if i come close i feel i'm being smothered by somebody i don't have privacy so all these things are actually a gift if you want to take it and if you want to not take it then it solve problem and i suffer and and there's what you call as home violence it has gone up because of that because we don't know how to relate with our own loved ones and we cannot you know tolerate them and see these people are getting on my nerves so actually you can be in bliss being with them or you can be completely go nuts so it is teaching us something so that's what i would say is the boom of covid or longings yeah that makes so much sense um do you have anything you want to add jesse to that i would say that um it's an opportunity for self care because like babaji said we're always running around you know all the time and we say we're doing self care but but you know it's maybe something very quick like just eating the right food like a smoothie or doing some exercise but we're still moving so fast you know so if you're home it's a nice time to ground and learn about some ayurvedic self care routines and implement new ways to ground yourself also part of self care at least from the vedic psychology point of view is self care for your mind you know so it's not just the abhyanga massage or scraping your tongue but it's actually doing things to work with your emotions so the idea of the knower getting to know themselves at least at the mind level knowing what are your emotions what do you wake up with in the morning a lot of people wake up and they're 5 out of 10 on anxiety just like that they're just running at a constant level of anxiety and we don't know that so it's an opportunity to ground and take care of your body and your mind and also to start more spiritual practices because you're stuck at home and you're lonely so these are different ways you can know yourself at different levels for, for young people it's an opportunity to see what it will be like when you get old and retire <laughs> so you have to peek into that and then you can plan well, what what you both have said makes me think about it's interesting right because we we can see this as such a gift we can see this time to be able with ourselves and to go internal and and kind of retreat a little bit from the external world even though if it's a little bit by force what, but there also seems to be this instinct in a lot of us to run away from that we we are constantly trying to get away from loneliness and as you said babaji sometimes that will look like you know alcohol or drugs or or you know maybe going out a whole lot or surrounding yourself with people that maybe aren't the best people to be around but they keep your mind engaged in in kind of external circumstances um but why why do we why are we so afraid of that why 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 do we do this well this is a very interesting question and i will explain it 
Uh, it's a very philosophical question, but probably I shall not go too much deep into philosophy. But I will say a few things. First thing is that we have to know that there is a difference between what you call being alone and being lonely. And we must know the distinction. So being alone is a reality. Being lonely is something which I feel in my mind. It's not a compulsion. It's not that I have to be lonely. So I can get rid of it. But you cannot get rid of being alone. So to give you an example, you are born alone and you will die alone. In between also you are alone, although you may not think so. There is a logical principle that what is in the beginning and what is in the end is also in the middle. So if, if at the beginning of my life I came alone and at the end I will live alone, that means in between also I am alone. So that is a reality. I am alone and that's why I am called an individual. When I say, when I use the pronoun I for myself, that I signifies that this person is not anything else around me. I'm not the table, I'm not the computer, I'm not Joff, I'm not Jessica. I am I. So that means I'm alone. And that cannot be changed. Wherever I go, I will be I only. I can be with a million people, I'm still myself. I cannot become anything else. So that's why, that's why I said that aloneness, being alone, that is a reality and it cannot be changed. Feeling of loneliness is something which we feel and you can feel lonely or you may not feel lonely. I can be alone in my room and not feel lonely. In fact, that's how I am. I, I am in my room, especially now, even before COVID came, I'm in my room most of the time. If I'm not traveling and I go down my room is on third floor. I go down to give class every day. I teach. And then I come back. I live in my room. I cook my own food. And I have three gates. Somebody who has to enter in my room, they have to cross three gates, which are all closed all the time, unless I give permission to someone to come in. So nobody can actually come in to my room. And I'm quite happy. I don't feel lonely. Why? Because I have understood myself. So if I understand myself, then I will not feel lonely. And it does not mean that I, I cannot socialize or I don't have friends. I can be with you and I, I enjoy being with you. I will give you an example to, because this is a very difficult point to understand. I will give you an example. Suppose you are a young boy, like five, six years old. And you're dependent on your parents for everything, for your maintenance, for your finances, food, cloth, shelter, everything. And they take care of you. So you feel very dependent on them. And now if you lose them, then you'll be very distraught. You'll be miserable. You'll become depressed. You'll be so sad. You'll be grieving because your shelter is gone. But you grow up and you make money. You educate yourself, you make money, you build your house, you have finances. Now you're not dependent on anybody. In fact, you can supply to others also. You may get married, you have children, you're supporting them. So when you do not have finances, you are dependent on others. When you have finances, you are not dependent on anybody. Right? right? And when you are dependent on others, then it is you are at their mercy and they may exploit you. They may trouble you. It happens. Even parents do sometimes. You know, When the child is there, the parents are playing with the child like a toy. You know, When the child grows up and starts doing something which they don't like, the same parents start doubling. Why are you doing like this? They want the child to be like their toy, you know, like a machine. So 
when I become financially independent, then I don't have to face this type of problem. So now you think similarly of being alone, loneliness. I'm a human being and I'm alone and that is a reality and no one can change it. But actually being alone is not a problem. It's just that I have never deliberated on it. I've never gone inside and figure out who am I and contacted myself. So then I'm running outside. Once you go inside and be with yourself, you'll be just happy. You'll be independent. Just like you become financially independent, you'll become relationally independent. And then you can relate. Just like when you have finances, you can actually give help to others. You can be with others and give them support. When you don't have finances and you are being with them and you are being nice with them, they're actually trying to get something. You may not say it. You have a job and you may say, oh, I like my boss. Actually, you like your boss because he's paying you. If he stops paying you one month, you will leave that and find another boss. So same is happening in the human relationships that I'm lonely and I'm feeling empty inside and I'm trying to make a relationship. And I think that I will get something from it. That's why I make relationship. But the problem is that other person is feeling the same. He's also empty and lonely. Just like two people who do not have finances, they come together and they think they'll become rich. Two beggars coming together are not going to become rich. It won't happen. So therefore their loneliness continues. Even when you are with other people, you may forget loneliness. Basically what we are trying to do is we are trying to forget loneliness. Whether we make relations or we go to bar or we drink or we watch a sports or we try to engage our mind so that we don't, this loneliness doesn't bother me. But as soon as I'm free from that engagement, the loneliness stares back at me. It's like a ghost following you wherever you go. But if you understand I'm alone, I'm a being, then this loneliness will leave you because it's not a reality. It's something which I create in my mind. And we are trying to do that every night. No matter how rich you are, no matter how good relationship you have, no matter how much possessions you have, how much power you have, every night you want to be alone with yourself. And you relish it so much. You want a good sleep. And if you don't get it, you are ready to pay anything for that. Right? right. Sleeping means I want to be alone. So loneliness I hate, but aloneness I like. And if you have a good sleep and you wake up in the morning, you are fresh and you say, oh, I had such a nice sleep. I feel so fresh and energized. So that is a being alone. And you can have the same feeling while you are awake. And you can relate with people. Then you won't feel lonely. You will be alone and you will know it but you'll be happy just like you feel happy when you have a good sleep. So, and it sounds like what you're saying too is that even, even by getting comfortable in that aloneness or knowing yourself, you actually relate more authentically with other people as well. And because only you can relate. Then only you can relate. Now when you're relating, it is artificial. Right. You're doing it to get something from somebody then you will relate to give something because you have something with you. And that will be a very meaningful relationship and very fulfilling relationship. Mm. You will be joy yourself and you will give joy to others. Now I'm empty, what can I give? I'm miserable. So then two miserable people, they go to bar and they drink. If I'm happy, why the hell I have to go to bar? I'm intoxicated 24-7. I don't need that and it doesn't cost me anything and I don't become addicted to it. No hangover in the morning. No, I don't have a headache. <laughs> <laughs> and it doesn't have side effects that it's going to kill my liver or something or it kills my brain cells every time I drink. Right. No. It's fascinating. So therefore, this is what 
covid is giving us the opportunity to go inside and be with yourself so now why we are so much scared of loneliness because we have never learned to be with ourselves we have not learned to be with ourselves we we be with ourselves by force when we get physically and mentally tired and we sleep that is by force not by choice so what i'm saying is to be with yourself by choice and when you will learn that you will see that this world is so blissful and all relations are happy you will be just floating in joy and it doesn't cost you anything you and you don't have to go anywhere it is not dependent on anything external not by any some substance you have it and we experience it every night if we have good sleep so therefore loneliness this is the biggest problem at present according to survey some survey say that 46% people are lonely in america and these are the people who are not old people of course old people may be lonely because they cannot do things which they were doing when they were young but between 20 from the age of 25 to like 45 people are 46% americans are lonely because they are so much busy with their job they are busy with their career you know they don't have time and even when they get time then they don't want to be with themselves then they are also running let me go to beach let me go to bar let me go here let me go there so we have not actually learned to be with ourselves and because we have not learned to be with ourselves we are so scared to be with ourselves if you put somebody in a room by themselves they are scared don't give them any gadget no iphone no computer nothing and just put them in a room this is hell that's why prison is a hell and there is what is the problem i i live like i am in a prison but i i relish it <laughs> so why prison is considered as a punishment because person has not learned how to be with himself or herself but if you actually learn that if you put me in prison i am happy what are they going to do i if they supply me food and and the problem i be there of course unless somebody just hassling me there that is a different story but maybe i'll deal with that but it's mainly is that i cannot go out and do things which i want to do or i will relate with others i am just by myself and i hate to be with myself when actually you can be completely joyful being with yourself in fact that is the only way you can be joyful and then only you can be joyful with others so now you can be in a crowd and feel lonely which most people are like that so we are all the time trying to be busy with social media because we don't like ourselves and social media doesn't you know bring intimacy so now it is amazing that when we have the best means of communication if you have an iphone you can be linked with to the whole world and we are still lonely we are more lonely than before because we don't have family relations and relations at job or at work they are not relations they are just for you know working they are superficial so we we have not learned to relate intimately why because i don't know how to relate to myself and if i don't know how to relate to myself then i don't know how to relate to another person because another person is also a person so if anything maybe this is the primary work that we should probably be doing in our lives right is that yes. what you're saying yeah this is the most important thing you should be doing otherwise you have money and you feel lonely you are in a power position and you feel lonely because nobody really wants to come near you so therefore then what do you do drugs sex but that also doesn't last permanently how long can you do that so this brings me to a kind of a somewhat related question based on that um 
there does seem to be some sort of, I don't know if hardwiring is the right word to use, but there is something in us that's seeking connection with other people, you know, whether it's a romantic relationship or for whatever reason, we want to be with, with other people, you know, is that, is, is there a real piece of that that's, that's healthy well, and good? Or is, are, are you saying that this is just kind of illusion or? No, or, it's not illusion. No. I mean, as they say that human beings are social beings. You know, we are social animals. If you study the history, people have lived as tribes. And, you know, there are villages in the history. People live together like a big village means like a big family. Everybody knows everybody. I was born in a village, so I know what it means to be in a village. Actually, this modern technology and industrialization is the one which created all these troubles. So you're uprooted from your village. Then you come to the city and you don't know anybody there. So you have to go to work. And then you don't have time to make relations. But when you're born in a village, you're naturally having relationship with everybody. You don't have to do anything. You feel supported. You feel part of it like a big community. And that's how tribes lived. So this industrialization has created this problem. So we are a social beings. And therefore, it is ingrained in us to have relationship. And relationships give us pleasure. Of course, I said you can have your own pleasure from inside, but that can be multiplied then if you meet another person and you can relate. The same thing like previously I was talking about two beggars meeting together or two people who have no money, they meet together, they're not going to have money. But imagine two people who have understood each other and they meet. So it's like two rich people coming together. So now they have more wealth, more joy, more happiness. And their relationship is not going to be some manipulating. Because they're not, this rich man is not relating with the other person that he wants to get some money from him. No, I have it. I mean, imagine that I have enough. Because when it comes to money, there's no end to it. People never feel satisfied. That is also because they have not understood themselves. If you can understand yourself and you can go within yourself and you don't need so many things <clears throat> you become self-satisfied after all why am i trying to acquire so many things to gain some satisfaction to gain some happiness and it doesn't come it cannot come because these objects outside do not have happiness but if i have my happiness inside then i don't need this that's why if you have studied Yoga Sutra, then Patanjali says that in Aparigraha. It's one of the principles, not having too many things. So then you can make meaningful relations. So we, as you said, yes, we have something inside our brain which seeks relations. So what is happening at present is that if you go a little more philosophically, that I'm identifying with the body. Actually, I'm not the body. This may be a little hard for people who do not who not studied this type of philosophy, Bhagavad Gita, etc. But actually, body is just my instrument. It's like you have a car and you drive the car and you go here and there. But you are not the car. But if you start identifying with the car, which sometimes people do identify, they are so much worried about the car, nobody should touch it. It happened to me once I was in Switzerland and one of my students was driving me to the airport. I had a flight to catch. So he brought and he parked the car. And he parked the car, but he parked it a little close to the other car. So when I opened the door, the door touched the car of the other guy. It did not really bang or anything, just touched it. And the guy was sitting in the car in the driver's seat. I was on the other side. So when I opened my door, it like touched his. He got so angry, he freaked out. How dare you touch my car? So I just looked at him, you know what can I do? I said, sorry, I didn't mean to do that. You know. But he, he kept on cursing me until I left. He was so pissed off. 
so so much identification with the car as if i have punched him in his face he felt exactly like that so but he is not the car so sometimes your car get hit you say you hit me so no i don't hit you i hit your car man <laughs> to you but you feel like that so similarly we are not the body we are separate from it mm. at night when you are dreaming you are dreaming you are not even aware of your body so that means you are not the body because you are not even aware of it you are something different and then you go in deep sleep the dreamless state where you don't even dream but you are still there so you actually are different from all this but now when we identify with the body then the bodily needs come hmm. it's like if you identify with the body then with the car then car has its own needs <clears throat> you can fulfill the car's needs without identifying with it but when you identify with it you will feel as if i need the gas not the car needs gas but i need gas or my tire is flat i so you will feel like that so similarly body has its needs like hunger relations these are all bodily needs so in this system we have a body and we have a mind so we have certain physical needs and we have psychic needs so relation is a psychic need and that gives me happiness just like food gives me happiness so mind has its own requirements mind is pleasure seeking it seeks pleasure all the time and relationship is something which gives intense pleasure so therefore we are seeking for that and we should take care of it but when i know myself then it is a different story it's interesting the couple of topics you've touched on with like cities and cars and identification because it it makes me think of you know there's there must be some sort of it sounds like what you're saying is there's a a middle ground in in a sense so like with your if you have a car yes of course you need to put gas in it you need to make sure the tires are inflated but yes. if you start over identifying that can become a problem where and then your all your money is just going to this car and everything and, and then you get so upset with somebody if they get a ding on it or in the same right. with maybe connecting with other people it's nice to have good relationships that are healthy and beneficial but you know i was thinking how a lot of people say you know in big cities maybe new york city or delhi or something where you feel even less you feel more like you want your own space you want people to be away from, you don't feel close because it's too much you know yes. so and and maybe that's maybe that's how, kind of how you're saying you know like, you do enough to you know feed your body take care of your body don't overindulge you know take care of your car if you have a car but don't overindulge and then you're too much disturbed if something happens to Right. somebody makes a statement about you and it's a jazz you look beautiful so you feel so happy and then somebody says jazz you stupid then you feel miserable <laughs> but actually just like someone says your car is beautiful and your car is broken then i don't have to be emotional about it okay it's a car which is beautiful so what is the big deal but we identify so much that even if you have a shirt and someone say oh your shirt is so nice so you feel happy but actually what is the reason that i have to be happy about it it's just my shirt and i can take it off and put another one but just because i'm identifying it so then what happens that my life becomes dependent on others it's like i have given the remote control of my life in the hands of other people so they can make a statement and disturb me positively or negatively when i praise you that is also disturbance positive one which i like and when i make a negative statement i disturb you which you don't like but actually you can take it neutrally smiling because just about the body and in fact what the person is saying may not be true also first of all 
but we we put so much trust in their words that immediately we take it somebody says something about good about you immediately believe it somebody says bad about you you get you don't believe it but you don't like it if someone says you are beautiful you believe it and you are happy if someone says you are stupid you don't believe it but you are upset why the hell are you saying but actually what is the need that guy has said something when i know myself then i will not be disturbed when i know myself whether i am beautiful or not beautiful then i am not disturbed about it. let them say. so then i take the control in my own hand so now my life is so much dependent on others what others say about me what others think about me but what the hell do i think about myself that i don't invest time in that if i become grounded in myself and if i know myself even physically i know about my body and i have my body has limitations i'm not a super human being you know, my memory my intelligence my physical strength everything has certain limitations so i i know it and i'm not worried it's just like i have a car in which may be a small honda car or it may be a big mercedes what i am t4 so it's okay i know it i just the car i can change it so therefore i have to understand myself i have to become situated in myself i have to become grounded in myself then i can have meaningful relationship with others and actually i can help others i can give joy to others right. when my my stomach is full and i can give food to others when i am hungry myself first i want to fill up my belly right um well, i'm i'm also curious i want to ask jessica a question too i i i love how she you always have very nice practical solutions to some of these things and i'm so i'm curious to hear um what's what's what are some practical ways that we can transform our mindsets like when we go to these places of loneliness or or if we continue you know some people seem to have a habit of really going deep into these places very often what are what are practical ways in in which you use in in your system of vedic psychology to to address these and on, on, on kind of an everyday level that people could utilize so the first thing is the reason why it's like so hard to actually be with yourself you know at the mind level what what i see is imagine that you're saying okay to be with yourself all you have to do is just lean back and relax in this very cooling uh pool of water like a a pool or a lake that sounds easy to do right and it feels so good especially in tucson when it's really hot or india when it's a super hot day you just lay in this water and that's all you have to do you're standing and just just stand in the water and then lay down and float in the water. But the problem is that imagine that there's a block between you and the water and it's like cactuses, very pointy cactuses. So to to lay in the water you have to lay on a bed of cactuses. So that's what it's like. That's what that's what the loneliness feeling is between you and yourself. And that bed of cactuses is your your childhood experiences of not being loved. So you when we're alone what happens is we we re we don't realize that it's not that we're having flashbacks but we 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 feel bad about ourselves we feel unloved we feel bored which there's really no such thing as that it's like a, bo a boredom is like not liking yourself so all these feelings of how your parents treated you how they neglected you how they ignored you how they made you feel not good enough how it felt to be alone when you're in your own house and your parents were ignoring you that feels horrible So all those memories come but not as conscious memories but it feels like something poking you very painfully and cutting you and biting you and then you have a self-hatred you feel like you hate yourself i'm no good i'm a loser you know so that's what's in the way between you and just relaxing into that that pool of cool water is you have to actually feel that intense uncomfortableness 
of being with yourself. And it's very subtle. In other words, we don't realize that's actually what's going on. We just think I'm bored or I want to go hang out with somebody or, oh, we don't actually realize that this is the mechanism going on. And so the way to practically first is to see it, to visualize that's what's happening. That, you, that there is that pool of water inside of you that you can relax into, but there's all these sharp things cutting you and hurting you to, to get there. So you have to look at those sharp things. That's the first step. What are those sharp things? And you have to realize, you have to start introspecting on your childhood and realize what are those things that made you feel not good enough? What are the things that your parents did or said or situations you got put in where you felt bad about yourself, where you felt unworthy of love. And then you have to actually start working probably with a therapist because it's hard to see those and it's hard to get out of them to help you start talking to that wounded part of yourself, which is not you as the adult. You as the adult, it's fine. You, you as the adult, you could see the, the pricker things and move them out of the way, get them out of the pool, right? But as the little kid, that's actually the one who's lonely the small child who was hurt, who was feeling unloved, not validated, not seen, neglected, that small child needs to be validated now. And the only one who can do that is you. But we don't realize that either. So what we do instead is we try to get other people to validate us. So out of our this loneliness feeling, now we're trying to always be around other people and get them to say, oh, oh, you're so smart. Or, oh, you're, you're so nice. Or, oh, you're so beautiful to make us feel worthy. So we don't have to feel those prickers poking us. So the first step is to realize just that visual to understand that that's actually what's going on at a very subtle level, level in your mind. And then the next step is to start working with those, those cactuses that are trying to prick you. So you can remove them and then you can just float in that nice cool pool of water. So in having someone like one, one of you, you both Guiding somebody through practices like that is one way and probably the best way, right? It would be nice to have a guide to sort of help you learn to do that process. And is that something that you all work with, with like journaling? Is it talk therapy? Is it, is there practical exercises? How do you, what type of things do you end up implementing with clients? Talk therapy. Talk. Talk therapy. And that's how, and then, then through the talk therapy, depending on the client and what things that we find that are poking and pricking them then then and depending on what they're open to doing it could be journaling it could be many many different things usually it's not just one thing but you said it'd be nice to have a guide but in my personal opinion it's it's not an option not to have a guide mm. i'm sorry to be so blunt but even the people who have a guide it's not a quick process these things are deeply ingrained in your psyche and and you think that they're normal and you don't even see them so you have to have somebody who's gonna actually point out this is like this and this is why, and now you have to think about that. And you, it's like recreating the, your foundation, which you, you take for granted as, as much as you take your own breath for granted. Mm -hmm. You're not gonna even think it's a problem. Half the time when I work with people, they say, I had the best childhood. I'm like, okay, so then why do you hate yourself? Why are you doing drugs? Or why are you whatever, whatever, fill in the blank. But so when you actually start looking at the childhood, it's not, it, the idea is not to, you know, bash the parents because every parent is doing the best they can. That's true for the most part, but it's to find out what the parent did, maybe inadvertently, they didn't mean to, they weren't trying to hurt you, but what they did or didn't do that put that dent in you that makes you feel unworthy of love. Makes you feel bad about yourself because that's what that loneliness is. Well, it's interesting to hear everything Babaji has said you know, in relation to getting comfortable with aloneness and, and, and finding your true nature and your true self, and also kind of utilizing the aspects of what you're talking about with also sort of picking a pack, picking apart your past traumas and patternings and things that have hurt you to sort of develop into a more, I, I guess, truer version of yourself, right? Or, or a healthier version of yourself. Yeah, so you have to work on both levels. What Jessica is saying, is something which you have to take care of your loneliness problem if you don't know how to deal with it. And C helps try to find out the childhood trauma or what she calls it, the cactus or some of these you know, problems and you get rid of them, but it does not end there. Then from there you go deeper inside yourself and try to understand who you are. 
So that's what I was talking about. It. So that's why we work together. <laughs> because what happens is most people, Josh, don't realize that they have the childhood trauma. They don't even think it's a trauma, you know? So they start at the step of trying to follow what Babaji is saying <laughs> and try to find themselves. But the problem is they have all this trauma that they don't see and they project it onto other people, you know? They don't think they have it and they're like, she's like that and he's like that. And they bring all their drama and trauma to the scene, right? And then they just want to follow the philosophy and do the spiritual practices without realizing that they have a lot of these cactuses poking them that are not only troubling them, which they don't see, but troubling everybody else around them. So that's why I, I focus on, okay, let's clear the cactuses so you can actually understand what Babaji is saying and implement it in your life. Because of our ahankara, our ahankara makes us think that we do understand it and we are implementing it. Right. Uh, right, our, our, our sense of identity is that I am, I don't have those problems. I'm a spiritual person. I understand what he's saying, and I'm going to implement it. I, and I already am. A lot of people think they already are situated right. in themselves. They already figured it out. I know that. Yeah. I get that. yeah. They're like, oh, yeah, I know what Babaji's saying. I've, I've been on this path a long time, and I'm already at that place. And they have no clue all the cactuses that are poking them. Right. So that's why I, I highlight that point. You have to remove the cactuses, and somebody has to point it out to you. You can't see your own. And then somebody has to help you work through them. And pull those out, and then when then when you hear what Babaji is saying, you can get it very quickly. So just like with our own eyes, we cannot see the eyelid, or we cannot see things which are very close to our eyes. So in the same way, these problems are very close to us. They are not too far away. They are they are with us. So we don't see them, as she is saying that most people think that they had a wonderful childhood. They had most loving parents. But when you actually hear their stories, then you realize that they had the most horrible childhood. But they, they don't see it even now when they're grown up. They're they are blinded to that. So that's why she said that it's not an option. But you actually have to take help from a guide to point out these problems. Because just like you cannot you know, diagnose your own ailment. You Go to a doctor, you go undergo some tests, you know, whatever x ray or MRI or CT scan and all that. So then you understand what's the problem inside. You cannot figure it out yourself. And then the treatment begins. So it's very important to go through that process, understand. I mean, if you are serious to get rid of this problem, otherwise, we have the other solutions, which everyone is, I mean, not everyone, but most people try some temporary thing, take a drug, drink, this, that, have a relationship. But those things do not work ultimately and they have their own problems. I, I think my, my personal experience, I worked with Jessica and she very quickly pointed to some things that I was blind to, you know, very quickly she was able to pick through some things that I thought I understood or, or didn't have to deal with and, and pointed that out. And that's why I find the system that you developed, Babaji, and that, and that you both work with, with this Jiva Vedic psychology, is so fascinating because you're implementing all these different ideas, you know, Western concepts of, of, of therapy along with the Jiva Vedic um, psychology and, and kind of, for lack of a better term, using the best of both worlds and allowing people to dive in on a level that will make them functional in the world, but then also go even deeper below that to where they, like, as you were saying, Babaji, can get a better sense of who their true self is, be more comfortable with themselves and who they are. And, and that's just a beautiful, beautiful thing. I love it. It's very so nice. just like to give you the same analogy of the car, <clears throat> that you have to go from, you know, wherever, from Tucson to say Los Angeles. So you need a good car for that. But you also need yourself in good health. So there's two things, you yourself, and your car. So you cannot neglect the car. Just because I'm not the car does not mean that I don't care for it. So in the same way, we have the body and we have to take care of it. I'm not saying neglect your body and don't care about your health. You should have good diet, good sleep, you know, whatever is needed. Take care of it. And then beyond that, are you yourself. So what Jessica is saying is that first we have all these prickly things punching us all the time, so you have to get rid of them. Maybe your tire got some 
you know some kind of needles in it we have to get rid of that so that we can move our life is a journey we are moving all the time physically mentally we are all the time traveling so we have to need we need good instrument to travel if we want a happy journey and if we want to reach our destination which is happiness beautiful and this this may be a little just sidetracking a bit of i am very curious how do you how do you see the relationship between we're talking a lot about the mind here and we also also have talked about the body how do you see that the interrelation do you see that we can go through the body to get to the mind or from the mind to get to the body or are they integrated how do, how do you view that connection well there are two parts of the same system but they're interconnected so you the body influences the mind and mind influences the body i think we all know that so your body is not in good shape you are sick and mind also becomes disturbed by that you don't feel good on the other hand if your mind becomes disturbed you get angry your whole body shakes the mind becomes depressed you don't feel like doing anything your body loses energy you feel like you have no energy to do anything so we have to take care of both we have to apply certain approaches which are related to body and there are certain things which are related to the mind so that is the holistic approach mm-hmm. that makes and me think a lot about ayurvedic treatments you know such as like abhyangas and 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 things like that to help to help improve the physical body as well to help improve the mind and oh well, maybe i could pressure also the next book and like yes yes <laughs> that's taking care but you know that that also influences the emotions right because when you have you have stress in the body then it gets lodged in certain parts and with your right pressure you can remove that so through the body you are reaching the mind so and i imagine for you both this concept of loneliness too is probably must be the most common issue you deal with yes and, and when you see clients i would imagine right maybe just to just speak on that oh sorry i my thing on mute um yes it, it might not they might not even realize they're lonely oftentimes people don't come to therapy because they're lonely but when we when we get to the root when we start digging you know they they come and they're complaining about a relationship usually right about some problem with another person but when we get to the root it's this loneliness yeah that's at the root, which is also comes off in times as lack of love this person doesn't love me you know right you see most people do not come for therapy because of loneliness they come because of something else right right <laughs> you don't go to a talk you know you are you are that's a extra function so people don't just come to you for some small pain here and there when it becomes something big then they come to you and you may deal with the that small thing or the other thing which is also behind which may be the actual cause right so people don't really come for loneliness they will come maybe for depression or some other relational mostly relational problems right but the root lies there they think they're coming for relation problems but really they're coming for loneliness right <laughs> <laughs> they just don't know it yet <laughs> <laughs> that's fascinating well i i appreciate both of you so much for all that you're sharing it's i find it so fascinating and so helpful and 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 as i said i've myself personally had help um with with using the process that you all have developed and I, I and I like it so so much um I know that you both have websites um I know Baba G most of your information is to be found over at jiva.org correct yeah okay I'll put that on the in the video link too but um jiva.org um is where you can find um most of the stuff from from Baba G and, and Jessica where is the best place to find if if people want to learn more i know you do you do personal sessions with people um i know you all teach a lot of times around the world probably not so much right now but i i believe you're doing an online course soon is that true or is we yep. talk about that, jessica please yep. 
Say more. We're doing um, the best place to reach me is at jessicarichmantherapist.com. And one thing that's important for people to know is that I do all of my sessions on video online. So if you're watching this wherever you are, I can see you. I have clients around the world. So I don't see anybody in person unless you want to come to India. I travel to Never India. <laughs> I'd be happy to see you in person. Um, and then the course we're offering is called Codependency Karma, which is all about relationships um, and learning how to be in healthy relations and how to get out of unhealthy ones. And that's August 21st, 22nd and 23rd. Um, it's a retreat. We're calling it the Codependency Karma Retreat. And oh, so it's all on Zoom. It's all on Zoom. And, and so where, you can- Where would one sign up for that? You can you could email me at okay. uh, jessrichu108 at gmail.com. Maybe you can include that, Josh, on the- Yeah, right there. That's it over here. And then I'll give you more information about that. What your website? My, web, on my website, I also have a blog that talks a lot about relationships. Yeah. Um, so the website's jessicarichmantherapist.com. And on there, you can see a blog about relationships, different issues with relationships. Well, that's a whole nother topic we could go into, right? Yeah, right. that'd be a fun topic. Yeah. <laughs> we have a lot to say about that, right, Babaji? Yeah. <laughs> all about relationship. What'd you say, Babaji? It's all about relationship. Yes. <laughs> well, um, both of you, I, I, again, I appreciate so much your time. Um, I know, and we're coming up on or just about an hour. So we'll let you guys go. And um, um, I'll make sure to put all the information to contact you all. And um, hopefully we can do this again at some point. I've enjoyed it so much. And we'll come up with another fun topic. So okay. thank you very much. Say, Thank you, Josh. Okay, thank you. Hi, Krishna.